Hi there, Dr. Dickon Weatherby from Optimal DX and the ODX Academy. Welcome to another Functional 5 training video. Today we're going to be talking about sodium potassium ratio in a Know Your Biomarker session. In the last couple of weeks, I've talked about a couple of different electrolytes, sodium and potassium. And at the end of the previous uh, video, I said that I would uh, cover the sodium potassium ratio because it's such a good ratio for us to take a look at for clinical implications um, associated with adrenal stress, adrenal insufficiency, catab catabolism, um, and such like. So in those previous posts and the previous video, we talked about how these particular electrolytes are under the influence of the adrenal hormone aldosterone. So in those previous video, I talked about how serum sodium and serum potassium are under the influence of the hormone aldosterone. It's an adrenal hormone. So we're looking here at the ratio between the sodium and the potassium. Very easy to calculate. You basically take the value of the serum sodium and you divide it by the potassium uh, level and you get your ratio. Ideally, you want to keep the ratio between an optimal of 30 to 35. Now we calculate this ratio for you in the ODX application, this is sort of an example of what that sodium potassium ratio looks like in the uh, application itself. So I wanted to take a moment to talk about some of the clinical implications for uh, a sodium potassium ratio that is out of balance. So let's talk a little bit about a high sodium potassium ratio. Now, the first thing that we wanna look at is uh, its relationship to acute stress. Now, acute stress causes an increase in adrenal activity and an increase in aldosterone output. Aldosterone causes sodium to be retained in the body and causes an increase in cerium sodium. So also, we're going to get that decrease in serum potassium as well. So in a classic ratio like this, when the numerator, which is the sodium, is increased, and the potassium, which is the denominator, is decreased, we get an increase in the ratio. And therefore, uh, the elevator ratio can tell us a little bit about stress and acute stress and its impact on adrenal hormones. Also, we want to take a look at its role as an inflammatory indicator. As I just mentioned, elevated uh, sodium-potassium ratio is an indicator of a higher aldosterone output. Now, aldosterone is often considered to be quite pro-inflammatory. And therefore, when we see an increase in that sodium-potassium ratio, it is seen as an inflammation indicator. Now, what about the decreased sodium potassium ratio. Now, this is a, a sign or an indication of chronic stress, adrenal fatigue, and adrenal insufficiency because chronic stress weakens the adrenal glands and causes a decrease in adrenal activity and a decrease in aldosterone output. Now, we have a completely different scenario here. We have a decreased aldosterone output, we have a decrease in the serum sodium, and we get an increase in the serum potassium, and that causes a decrease in our ratio. So decreased ratio is associated with adrenal insufficiency. Increased ratio is associated with acute stress. Now, another indicator is what we call a catabolic indicator because a decreased ratio is an indication of a higher cortisol output, which is a hormone associated with tissue breakdown and catabolism. So let's summarize that. So an increased ratio is associated with acute stress and potentially an inflammatory indicator. And a decreased ratio is associated with adrenal insufficiency and also a catabolism indicator. So well worth calculating. We do it for you in the ODX application. If you want to do it on your own, just take the serum sodium level divided by the serum potassium. You want to keep that ratio between 30 to 35. So I hope you found this helpful. This is another one of our functional five. My name is Dr. Dickon Weatherby. If you're at all intrigued or interested in what we're doing at Optimal DX, please do come over to OptimalDX.com. Check us out. We have a free trial in the ODX application for you, just waiting for you to try it out. We will be continuing our journey into the electrolytes by looking at uh, chloride and CO2, and we'll also be looking at the anion gap and then kind of capping it all off with a, a little presentation in a few weeks on pH. So 
that's uh, something to look forward to. My name is Dr. Dickon Weatherby from Optimal DX. Thanks for watching and take care.